<coughs> Python and Prime, a personal experience. I'm not going to tell you a lot about Python, uh, rather than how to deal with Python on the Prime, what I have seen so far. I'm not a Python uh, expert, but I tinkered a lot around <laughs> with, the, with the Python on Prime. So this is a very personal experience. Other as you might uh, su suppose, Python is not derived, the, the name Python is not derived from the two intertwined snakes you see on the logo, but from the British comedian group Monty Python. Okay, uh, and that can be, sheen, uh, can be seen here in the uh, uh, HP Prime implementation. I show you first ir irritations, then how to set up the PC to, p to work uh, efficiently with uh, programming in Python, how to organize Python a little bit that is, is usable, uh, using PPL in conjunction with uh, Python, some annoyances, annoyances and uh, conclusion. Okay. I told you already, named after Monty Python. Uh, specifically for uh, Python is the structure is not given by any big begin, end, and such statements or opening and closing braces or so. It is just done by that shadow. So here's a sample of a uh, Python program. Uh, using Notepad++, which is very nice uh, for, for this language, highlighting the control structures. And so you see here just uh, as a sample uh, many if and elif cases. And the structure is simply given by the co correct uh, indentation of the following statements. So. A lot of people don't like it, but for a beginner like me, this is really convenient and uh, compared to PPL, it's much easier to read what happens at what. Down, sir. When you approach a language, a computer language, you try to let it say, hello world, won't you? So this is uh, also in in Python, we see it says, hello world. How is it done? With the, touching the symbol key, we open the editor. And there we see the simple statement, print hello world. As easy as that. No declaration, nothing. Not, no export of anything or so, just a statement, print. Hello world. Now we come to the oops. I've uh, routinely doing the print in order to clear the terminal. Now, as a German, I, can, I claim the right to uh, change the word world a little bit with the German <laughs> Ö, so the season. And uh, now the printout has some trailing characters. It doesn't simply print out hello world, but also here you see the backslash and dill. When I do it again, it Arbitrary. So, you may think, think uh, well, I couldn't care less about German characters in uh, program language. But look at the next line that would, could say angle of 32 degrees, 45 minutes, and 38 seconds. But it doesn't only print that, it has some trailing arbitrary characters in as such. So what does it tell us? This is a very fundamental function of a program language, of a program language, right? 
and this only already fails. This is a clear sign of a quick and dirty implementation of Python on Prime. Hmm? Okay. So this is the first annoyance. The same is true if you try to input something when you're in the input field, have some explanatory uh, text and characters higher than 126 on the ASCII table, you get a lot of garbage. Oh, I should say, when you do this on a real prime, you may sometimes have uh, additional characters <laughs> that extend over three lines or so. So it's uh, not really nice, I would say. Why the hell does it? Okay. So those are the first irritations. Now about set up a PC. Why, why set up a PC? When you do development on the Prime, on Python on the Prime, the Prime is very vulnerable. So it has a lot of reboots and crashes and so on. So you are better off to do this on the PC, perhaps even on a Mac, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and when you're finished, or in conjunction with the uh, virtual uh, calculator, and when you're finished, then move it over to uh, the real prime, and it may work flawlessly, most probably not. We have the virtual calculator, we have uh, the connectivity cat, kit, and from the connectivity kit, we always can send what we want to have next on the calculator. So, the other recommended screen is then with uh, the Notepad++ as editor and uh, the File Explorer. So, the, the working would be you edit your program here in the Notepad calculator you save what you need, and uh, perhaps you go to another uh, file. Uh, so here's a work done. And then you go back, and then when you have changed it, you can go to the connectivity kit and send the re-edited uh, file again. So I've, I've shown you the issue with Hello World. Let's go to the sample. So in this sample, if it's right. So in this sample, we have three files, A, B, and C and each of the files do something. So I start the command line, and now we see that three files are immediately executed. This is not what we always want. We would like to have more control about what really happens. So how are we doing that? One method is to go to the setup for Python. The setup for Python is under shift plot, the setup. Now, here we have some meaningless uh, entries. The coordinates so far have no function at all in Prime. The heap is the available mem memory in kilobyte, so we have 1,024 kilobyte uh, allocated. And very important is here, file will auto load when changed. So if we untick it, we clear the, the terminal and we try to start the interpreter again and nothing happens because the files are not 
loaded automatically. Now that can be controlled by, uh, can I have a third hand? So when I say import A, it should have import ah. A. So by importing the file A manually, it is automatically executed. So this gives you one method to have control over what is executed or not. Now let us hope I get my other. Ah. So this, this is uh, one method as uh, de described. Shift plot gets you to the uh, setup screen of Python. And uh, you just can uh, change the heap, the allocated uh, memory and you can tick or untick the outer load. So, another method then is when we look now at the file, we enclose everything in a different so we, before we had a flat code to be executed, this time we have a definition. And a definition doesn't anything unless it is called by someone. So here you see the files CBA are all imported automatically, but nothing happens. Now we could say, I don't have a third hand, but perhaps I can, uh, yeah. So we have a, the definition was a parenthesis, and I call it. Now we have the file A executed. We can do the same with B and C. So this is another way to control what is executed from Python or not. I've read a lot of uh, problems in the forum where people ask, oh, is everything is executed automatically. How do I control this? This is one method to do that. So, the next thing what we can do is use PPL to call pi. We have the file test. As you can see, this is a PPL file. It starts with a hash character, say Python gives it a name test, it has some code, and it's the Python, tie, Python, Python part is then ended by the statement hash end. And under that, we have usual PPL st statements, export PPL a begin and do something. So here, we are not calling the Python app rather than uh, a PPL application. And we run it. As I have two files in this uh, thing, we, oh, we just do it. So. Now you can read from PPL1, input was 12. We can do the same, PPL1, <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, 12. 
itself. Now, from direct from the uh, PPL command line, we can do uh, the same. Uh, don't give up. We so we can hand over strings as well. That is not possible. That is not so easy possible when we call the program here to enter any characters doesn't work. It doesn't accept strings here in this input field. Inconsistency of Python. Okay. Now let me see. Can I? Ah, it worked. <laughs> now, now we also can use PPL from Python itself. That is the other way around. Two that away. Now we are. Uh, we called it call Python. Here you see at the top to import A, known A from the Python file, execute A, and in the lower part, as before, call the Python. So in this case, the PPL file is named A, you're saying? Beg your pardon? Which file is named A? A, A is uh, the file we had in the Python, okay. in the Python, the Python. Okay. We run it. It says PPL3, and here is hello from A again. This is another uh, method. So I think if that is almost enough. Python on the prime is very limited in its capacity. It's a closed shop, so you don't have something like an other implementation that you can import libraries or something like that. It's not available. So you have to live with what is on the prime. And uh, you can use everything that's available in the PPL environment by handing over a string to the PPL environment that is syntactically con correct to be interpreted, interpreted by the, yeah. by the uh, uh, prime. I have s so far uh, experienced three, three methods. This is one is string concatenation. The second is replacement of the percent s for string, percent d for decimals, and percent e for integer or, or, or float replacement, and all the format statement. The important thing on these things is you have to be very careful <laughs> what you hand over to PPL. So when you, when you try to hand over a string to PPL, it has to be in, in, quoted, in quotes that is handed over to PPL. So in general, 
you would use HP prime dot eval and close your statement in single quotes and any, sta any statements within that need to be handed over as, as text, as string, has to be handed over within double quotes. It doesn't work vice versa. Okay. Positive uh, on, MicroPy on MicroPython on the Prime is the MicroPython uh, implementation itself seems to be rather stable. Not to mention print and <laughs> input issues. Uh, but once you include modules uh, to deal with them, you have an, a, a steady flow of bugs, annoyances, crashes, reboot, reboot. It's really a steady flow. You have inconsistencies, uh, a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, some aspects are documented, others not at all. Um, don't rely on functions that are in the catalog uh, to be available. I just once had a discussion with Bernard Paris, and he said, hmm, uh, we have not impl implemented all functions. What <laughs> so what does it mean? In Python, you have the command cut. cut. So <laughs> here, my <laughs> my prime disappeared. This is a moment when the real prime kindly tells you, you your prime had a problem. It will reboot in three seconds. Okay, we, we call it back. Now, we have the co commands uh, that we can have a look. Uh, some things are nicely documented. Here, picks on, for instance, we look at the help screen, and it tells you, hmm, this is a command. You have to input these things, and there you go. This, this is not widely available. This is a positive exception. Reboot, reboot, reboot. And then it pretends to be kind to you. After sufficient, after sufficient reboots, arbitrary, no discernible reason whatsoever, it will tell you clearing memory success. <laughs> And then you have an empty calculator. Everything you have done so far is gone. I think at least it should say, clearing memory, sorry. <laughs> or better, clearing memory, beep yourself. <laughs> In my introduction yesterday, I said it's a matter of love and hate. Well, for me, it's a toy. I'm grandpa sitting in his armchair, pushing the keys, not too bad. But it's not fit for serious use. Don't give it your, to your kid when, when this Python is a subject it has to deal with. Look for another thing. Uh, number works, so by spiel. Uh, Numbers, for, inst for instance, uh, is much better usable. It's such a pity because Python on the Prime is it, it's so powerful. It runs circles around everything else. 
So hmm, it might drive you, drive you crazy. Coming back to Monty Python, one of their famous movies was Life of Brian. And in the end, the crucified gang hanging there on the cross cruises sings together, always look on the bright side of life. Questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gunther.